We are in transition, I hope, from a period in which mental illness was viewed as a moral failing to one in which it is recognized as a treatable brain disease. In 2007, uh, I lost my mother to mental illness. It's very easy when you're dealing with somebody who suffers from mental illness to just tell them, you know, well, be happy. It's a beautiful day. You've got so many wonderful blessings in your life and to lose patience with them because you don't understand what they're going through. The stigma that's associated with mental illness is overwhelming and quiets the nation. And we have so many places where we need to intervene. And from my perspective, working with children and families first is the place to go. I want to get to the point where we're all really comfortable saying, yep, got a family history of depression. Yep, got a family history of schizophrenia. Yep, got a family history of anorexia nervosa. Because then and only then will we have put mental health on the same playing field as we have other physical conditions. Our family started this because of our brother who was diagnosed with uh, chronic bipolar disorder. They said, look, we don't know anything about these illnesses. We are in the dark. We can, we can guess, but we really don't know because there's never been a lot of research done in these fields. It's very, very difficult for them to find funding on an idea. Every step along the way requires more investment so that we can focus that investment and really crack this nut. If you start with nothing at the beginning of a career, you have great ideas, but you have nothing to show for. It takes money to go around the world and collect all these samples. And then once we have all those samples, it takes more money to genotype them. Look, it actually can work. We haven't worked out the details yet, but overall, this is promising and it's worth pursuing. The model of the, the Foundation of Hope funding is to take um, relatively small but meaningful amounts of money and to use those as so-called seed grants so that, that the investigator is able to take the money, start a study, obtain preliminary data, and then use those preliminary data to justify the larger study when they apply to the NIH. And that's critical. We take this innovative, very different, novel approach, a combination of engineering science and at this point medicine to develop new treatments for patients with mental illness. I believe we're going after the most fundamental mechanism that gives rise to these disturbed electric network activity patterns. If we can find out what goes wrong in these electric communication, these networks, we can go and fix these. And that's truly revolutionary, because when you think of how we practice medicine now, even beyond psychiatry, it's like everyone gets the same treatment, same drug, most of the time same dose. But what we can do with brain stimulation is, we can, and with our deeper understanding of the underlying brain circuitry, we can adjust it patient by patient. I submitted many grants in my first year, newly minted assistant professor at UNC, and you know what, out of all of them, they all got turned down except one grant. And that was the grant from the Foundation of Hope. Every time someone with anorexia nervosa dies, it just chips away a little piece at my heart. And for years, people have thought that someone chooses to have anorexia nervosa. It's another blatant error in our understanding of the disorder. It's not just willpower. It really has to do with fighting a biologically based mental illness. It's quite clear that genes play a role in these illnesses. And now what we're trying to do is say, okay, where are those genes and how do they function to increase someone's risk for the disorder? The Foundation of Hope seeded a grant at UNC that allowed us to start collecting DNA from people who have had anorexia nervosa at any time in their life. So really that seed funding in the beginning was part of what started all of this. These basic science studies are really helping us understand the exact targets for future therapeutic development. This has been a magnificent time to be involved in research on the brain, and particularly research involving people who have mental illnesses. 
uh, what was different about the Foundation of Hope is that they're willing to take this risk, like invest in a startup company. And that really made a, a dramatic difference in terms of what kind of scientific risk we could take and how fast we could pretty much actually immediately start working towards realizing uh, the, the end goal of what we're doing is to develop uh, new brain stimulation treatments for patients with psychiatric illness. And what this did is it sort of led to a cascade of funding and really brought together 15 different countries. The Foundation of Hope, year after year, enables our young investigators to pursue the leads, not all of which are going to be successful, but some of which are going to have dramatic impacts on the lives of people in this country. The Foundation of Hope has funded over $3.7 million worth of studies. So what we've done now is we got another grant, so the cascade has continued. That initial investment by the Foundation of Hope has literally led to millions of dollars of research support that I've received now. Among others, the Brains Award by the National Institute of Mental Health, where they've recognized me as one of the uh, new pioneers, most promising new researchers in the field of psychiatry. We have embraced the world. We have researchers all the way from Japan to Australia to Denmark to Greece who are involved with this study. This has been a global effort that was seeded by the Foundation of Hope. The Foundation of Hope has been so successful in its investment that they have been able to translate a million and a half dollars in funding to over $150 million in funding for uh, our investigators from the NIH. This is an enormous return on investment. Altogether, it really is impressive how such an early investment has led to such a big payoff in terms of resources to now fully scale up our research, enable us to be more efficient, enable us to be faster, and to move faster towards actual treatments that are gonna benefit the patients. We do like to fund in our community. In fact, that's one of our major goals. We were really excited about that new signature grant that last year we awarded to the Wake Pediatric Behavior Clinic. We treat kids from the ages of probably about 4 to 18, but our primary case is serving those who are underserved. Um, and they are greatly impacted in their normal functioning and their everyday lives, as well as their future, by not being able to get these illnesses treated. At times when we may have a diagnostic dilemma and we really want to have some more psychological testing, through the work of the Foundation, we've been able to do that um, just about every time we've, we've seen the need, which is really wonderful not to have to par partition out resources. We're able to be more present at more meetings, more supportive of families, better able to help them negotiate the systems they have to within the school setting that can be so challenging and disheartening for parents of children with mental illness. Seeing so many people come out and support this wonderful cause, it inspires me because it tells me that the stigma of mental illness and the idea of what it is compared to what it used to be is, uh, is, is crumbling and, and people, they get it and they care and they want to be a part of something bigger than them and that's exactly what this is. The amount of people in the community that have opened up because of this walk is amazing. I believe we've made a very big impact in that way. We all come together on walk day for that one cause. There are clinicians, there are researchers, there are patients, there are families. It's an amazing feeling and it's a beautiful event every year. They're basically planting the seed of hope uh, for millions and millions of Americans and, and people all over the world who suffer from mental illness. Hopefully, we're going to be able to make an impact in this illness. Over 3,000 people come to walk and enjoy the day, but also to make a statement that we can't be silent about the devastating impact of these illnesses and we can actually do something about them. I believe that there are breakthroughs on the horizon and there are answers and there are cures and we, we know that this is, we're, we're getting closer. Yeah.